to work so hard uh, as a designer and, and, uh, and uh, but I, and as I reflect, reflect on that, I think it's, it came uh, as a youngster about the typical insecurities that you have as a youngster growing up in high school. Uh, I felt I had to do everything. I had to, uh, and prove, to prove myself. Mm -hmm. And I think it was due to basic insecurity of who I was, and, which of course I think many young people have that, uh, and that was my response to it. I just had to prove myself. Mm -hmm. So that did carry through, I think, uh, on into um, professional practice and during my education as well. I, I remember uh, at Harvard, uh, every Thursday night was an all-nighter mm -hmm. because we had a project due on Friday. And uh, I shriveled away from over 200 pounds to 185, which oh. wasn't <laughs> too small, but, uh, and I was sick most of the time, just trying to do the best job I could in design, uh, in the design studios we had. Students need to be exposed to a lot of different uh, design challenges. And the more you you do design, the better you get at it. Mm -hmm. And the more you're able to uh, make that process a part of you, an unconscious part of you, it becomes, uh, you put it in your subconscious mm -hmm. and it just functions. And so my view was that in order to become a good practitioner, you had to develop a good process. Mm -hmm and you had to sublimate it down into your subconscious. You couldn't do it consciously. That, I believe in hard work. Mm -hmm. And I, I suppose that comes from, in part, my in basic insecurities as a child, but also I think it's just a Midwestern, uh, you know, you gotta work hard to accomplish anything worthwhile. And in the meantime, I had applied at the American Academy in Rome, and I got a uh, fellowship there to go uh, for, for a year, and then ended up getting reinstated for two years. Mm -hmm. So I was out at, in Rome for two years. Beautiful learning experience. I've learned a lot over here. Uh, studying Roman court homes, urban spaces, land development uh, of all kinds, especially in the Netherlands. So I sent my portfolio down over to Berkeley, which I'd, I'd always wanted to go to California because here was Garrett Ekbo, there was Tommy Church, uh, Robert Royston, Laurie Halpern, all of these big names in modernist design. Uh, so I was just excited mm -hmm. to go there. So mm -hmm. I took the they, they hired me as assistant professor and I spent two years just absorbing the California landscape and well it, it was uh, 62, 64 to 66 I was there and it was the free speech movement and Mario Di Savio was the student leader on campus at Berkeley and uh, it was a time of uh, great turmoil in education the students would, would uh, constantly be asking you, why are we doing this? Mm -hmm. So as a young teacher, I, I had to develop a very clear logic as why we did various things. And uh, it, was, uh, so it was a great learning experience in my point of view in terms of justifying what I was doing uh, for them and why they had to learn it. And, uh, but on campus at the Berkeley Gate, uh, you enter the campus, and on one side you find uh, this this massive administration building with these long columns, very, you know, powerful structure. You march up these grand stairs to it, and on the other side you had this modernist student union with multiple levels and all kinds of sitting areas and 
discussion areas. So here were the, were the, the physical environment uh, promulgated the whole chaos because yeah. you had this visual uh, focus of the administration so close to the, the uh, ferment of discussion and uh, so that that's why it, uh, my theory is why it all happened there because the physical environment shaped the uh, activities of the of the community <laughs>